Well, hey folks, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. Today I'm here to talk some shit. Actually, I'm going to talk about human waste. And I'm going to uh, talk about how I handle my human waste here at the cabin. Uh, it's something that a lot of people have asked me about. And the reason that I haven't posted anything before now is because the system that I work and what I use is an experimental system. It hasn't been approved by any uh, government uh, outfit, uh, and so I haven't put it out as uh, something that people should be using yet until I had time to actually test it over a long period of time to make sure it works. And it is still experimental. It still isn't approved. I do have uh, approval from my county, and uh, because I explained the system to them and what I'm doing, they allow me to use my system here, but they do come up and check it every once in a while to make sure that it's working. I've had it running now for about seven years, and it works very, very well. It even works better than what I actually expected it to work, and the county has been very pleased with it. So now maybe we can move forward in making this a system for off-grid homesteaders, and maybe it will even extend into... Uh, maybe residential systems if somebody wants to put this together as a commercial product. But I want to uh, remind you that this is an experimental system. It isn't approved uh, for use anywhere. However, if you can get your county uh, to go along with letting you use this system, then by all means, please do use it because it does work very well. Now, a little bit about composting toilets. There's lots and lots of different plans and varieties of ways to compost waste. Now when we talk about composting what that means is using the natural microbes, microorganisms uh, that are basically in your gut, you already have them, and also in the soil and they even go through the air and what they do is they decompose the waste. They eat the waste, they break it down into its very basic nutrient essentials, the moisture uh, is generally just flows back into the soil. That's how most composting systems work. Most composting systems use a pit or a composting pile and what they do is they add something like straw or something like that, sawdust, uh, wood chips, something like that. They create a pile and then the microbes that are inside the waste eat the waste and it breaks it down and then they add that either to a garden or they just let it compost naturally into the soil. Now here's the problem with that system and I've used that system so I know it does work but it doesn't work everywhere. The problem with that system is in areas that are really really cold like my area gets very very cold in the winter and freezes that compost pile or compost pit will freeze. And as a result, once the microbes drop below 50 degrees, they stop working altogether. And there's no composting going on. So a lot of times what you end up with is a frozen mass of human waste in a compost pile. Even if that compost pile is well tended and well treated, if you've got really, really cold temperatures because of the moisture that you're putting into a compost pile, it will end up freezing. The other problem with compost piles is they attract flies. They will also attract animals. And in my case, it attracted my dogs and cats. Uh, so then you've got a real mess of animals that are coming around your compost and things like that. Now, there are ways to get around that. You can put a screened enclosure around it. And you can actually build a greenhouse over a compost pile, and that will help keep it warm. But what I wanted to come up with was a system that didn't require very much maintenance, uh, that was, is, would eliminate uh, the cold factor so that it would stay warm all the time. Microbes and microorganisms generally have to be kept above 50 degrees in order for them to work effectively. You also want to keep them up at a temperature that they like and can live and so that temperature is somewhere between 90 and 110 degrees. That's what they like. They like a warm temperature. If you keep the microorganisms warm, they work much faster to break down the compost or break down the waste into compost. And that's what we want. So my system, it uses, it isn't really anything uh, uh, experimental. What it is is I just use the natural system that is already in place in nature and I just speed it up. 
so that it works much, much faster. And so I'm going to explain to you how my solar composting toilet works. Now, like I said, I want to remind you this is experimental. But it does work. It works very well. And if you can convince your county into letting you use this system, then by all means, it is a great system. And in my opinion, it is easier to maintain and works better than a traditional composting pit if you live in colder climates. So let's go down and I'll explain my system to you. Okay, this is one part of my solar composting toilet. This is the toilet. And all it is is a porter potty. And this one has a five gallon tank underneath it. You can get these just about anywhere. I picked this one up at Walmart for about 60 bucks, I think is what I paid for it. Just a basic porta potty with a tank. And the, the top separates from the bottom unit. And then once a week, if it's just me, once a week, I take that tank out and I empty it into the solar composter. If I got two people here, then I usually have to empty it twice a week. So uh, that's, that's the basic toilet that I use in my house all the time. And I just brought it out here to kind of show you what it is. So then I'm going to show you where I take that. And my solar composter sits out there. You can kind of see it. And so what I do is I put my uh, tank, I take, I separate the uh, porta potty and I put the tank in a wheelbarrow and then I just wheel it over to my composter out there once a week. So I'll wheel it out there and I'll show you how the composter works. Okay, so I'm out here now at the uh, solar composter and uh, brought my tank out here so I can empty it into it. But what I want to explain is uh, underneath this box that you can see there, is a 4x8 cement block septic tank. Now the reason for that is uh, because the county requires a septic tank. And what I did is I built a septic tank according to the old uh, plans that were grandfathered in basically which is a 4x8 two baffle septic tank that sits underneath this made out of cement block and I'm going to show you the pictures of that uh, because I built this seven years ago so I'll have to show you the pictures before I built it as I was building it so that you can see what that looks like but underneath this wood box is a 4x8 cement block septic tank and it has a drain field which is also required by the county now I will explain that the county requires all this stuff because they weren't expecting someone to improve on the system, <laughs> okay? So what this is, is uh, underneath this end here, at how an old system worked is you would dump all your fluid into the septic tank, the, the solids would settle to the bottom, the fluids would flow over the baffle, and then it would flow out into a drain line that has holes in it, and that would go out underneath the soil out here, and uh, that's how it would be composted. The solids would basically stay in the tank. The liquid would go out into the ground and just be naturally composted back into the soil. That's how a septic tank works. Nothing really scientific about them, okay? I improved on the system. What I have is, you can see these glass windows. And I actually got these glass windows at a, a yard sale. The guy was just basically giving them away because he had replaced these windows. So I think I paid a couple bucks for these windows. And you can see that I've built a box, and it is angled so that the moisture will run off the top of the box. Okay? And how this works is, I dump my waste from my toilet. You can see the opening right there. I dump my waste from my toilet into that opening. That goes down into the bottom of the tank. When the sun shines through these panels, it warms up that tank. The warmer it gets in there, the more active those microbes and microorganisms get. The warmer they are, the better they like it, the more active and more eating they do, and the faster they compost that waste down. Now 99% of all human waste is just moisture. That's all it is. It's just moisture. Only about 1% of human waste is actually a solid material. So what that happens here is that box gets very warm. It'll get about 120, 200 degrees in there sometimes. And what it does is that evaporates off the moisture. And that's where you can see this vent stack right here. Okay? So what happens is when I dump my waste in there, all the moisture is evaporated off and comes out of that vent stack right there. 
the microbes and microorganisms that are down inside that tank, they just love that temperature. They go to work on any solid waste that's down there, and they eat all that solid waste really, really fast, breaking it down into almost nothing. And I mean almost nothing. In the seven years I've been using this system I, and dumping my waste in here, there's less than an inch of waste, of solid waste, down in the bottom of this tank. Okay? Because the microorganisms just are continually working. Even in the winter time, because they're kept warmer, they're working all the time. And so they break down the waste. The moisture is all evaporated out goes up through that vent stack right there so there's nothing ever ever uh, building up inside the tank it just eats it down and breaks it up con constantly continually so the drain field which I was required to put in uh, by the county has never ever had any moisture running down it because no water ever gets over here there's no continual moisture going in here now I would say that I do not put my shower or my sink water into this. All of that water is gray water and I harvest that gray water back into a different system which I'll explain in a different video. This system is only used for my toilet, for human waste, okay, not for gray water. If you put gray water in here, then you're going to have a lot more moisture and it's going to take a lot more uh, work in order to evaporate all that extra moisture off there. That isn't what this system is for. This system is simply for human waste okay so you can see the basics of how this system works the sunlight penetrates through those windows it heats it up just basically like a greenhouse <coughs> excuse me it makes the temperature inside that box much warmer so the microbes and microorganisms can work and uh, they love that temperature so they go right to work eating and breaking down all that waste into compost the excess moisture is evaporated off, and so there's no moisture or water buildup in this system here. And uh, what this does is it allows me so I don't have to have a composting pit or a composting pile. I don't have to go out and turn my waste. Uh, I don't have to worry about flies. I don't have to worry about animals getting into it. I come out here once a week, dump my composting toilet into that opening right there. The moisture is evaporated off. The compost breaks down into almost nothing in the bottom of the tank. That's my solar composting toilet. The plans for this solar composting toilet are in my book, Ultimate Off-Grid Guide. Uh, and you can see how to build it uh, with the tank and you can see how to build the top. And uh, basically all you need is a cement block tank, an evaporative uh, uh, vent, and a couple of windows. And that's about it. And this system works great. All right, folks, now you understand how I do my human waste, and I've talked a little shit to you. Uh, thanks for coming to my channel. Please do subscribe to my channel. Go visit my website, simplesolarhomesteading.com, for more information and to get the book Ultimate Off-Grid so you can see how these uh, uh, solar composting toilets are built. Thanks. Bye.